Um, Excellent. I do just need to warn you, I'm not good with music or crowds. That's fine. You don't need to be. This is all just a ploy to get inside. Oh, okay. Yep. I'm warning you in case they ask us to play something. Oh, it's fine. I'll just play something myself. I'm kind of hoping they ask. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll walk up to the guards. All right. They kind of hold their hands up and they say, "What? Well, what do you want? What's your business? Hi, yes. Um, <laughs> you must not recognize me. My name is uh, Tilda Swinton, and uh, I'm a famous musician. I've been asked to play at a uh, Arthur Sin's house recently. Uh, make a deception check. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, that is an unnatural 20. All right. They kind of look to each other and say, Arthur's party again. Uh, go ahead in. You, you know yes. the address, right? We don't got to walk you I in. I do. I do know the address. <laughs> and they say, fine. And they kind of part ways and they say, go ahead in. Thank you. Lucky <laughs> bastard. I always wanted to go to one of Arthur's parties. It's not that great. <laughs> the food is very subpar. He's very cheap. <laughs> Kind of look to each other and say, "He puts okay. grapes in his chicken salad. <laughs> Who does that?" <gasps> Make another deception check. <laughs> uh, that is a twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. <laughs> they kind of go that. That is a, a little weird. I, I guess I never. I always thought the parties would be, you know, high class. You'd think. You'd think, but hmm, you know. Not that rich without being that cheap, you know what I mean? <laughs> they kind of nod to each other and say, well, well thank you. Uh, go ahead in. You know, have, have a good time. Yes. yes. Tell you what. If it ain't too late, you boys are still here. Once I'm done for the evening, I'll come by and play you guys a new ditty. How's that sound? They kind of nod. That'd be nice. Uh, we'd appreciate it. It kind of gets a little boring on our job here. I, uh, I, I bet. But I gotta go. I have to run. <laughs> All right, uh, do I see the child? Make a perception check. Uh, 18. 18. As you hurriedly head into the high-class district, up ahead you do see the child kind of half running, half walking uh, further, deeper into the section. All right, there he is. Let's follow him. Also, I'll take my instruments back. <laughs> Hugo just pants his back over. <laughs> He's even holding it like he doesn't know how to how to hold it. Yeah, it was like upside down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See, Dante, you didn't have to play anything. It was fine. All right. So as you head deeper into the the section of the city, eventually he takes a turn onto a smaller side street full of these large manor houses. And up ahead, you do see a crowd of people gathered at what looks like some wrought iron gates mm. to this lavish ivory palace of sorts. It's not a palace, but it's large. And mm -hmm. you see the boy kind of run up to the bouncer. He tugs on his jacket and flashes the same thing he flashed to the guards. The bouncer nods and ushers him in past the crowd. Um, does the, um, um... Does the, the does this place match the the the, the um the, the address? address we yes. For, yeah. Okay. All right. I know how to get us in. How are you going to do that? Ah, just just play along. Because if I were to explain it, it would be very confusing. I will walk up to the bouncer. I have arrived. <laughs> He kind of looks at you, and the rest of you hear people in the crowd kind of shout, Hey, back take back of the line! Don't you know who I am? <laughs> I'm the material girl. Yes. My name is Madam Gubolti. I'm the entertainment this evening for the seance that we plan on doing. You know. Uh, hey, I gotta head out. Okay. Uh, go ahead, continue. Just pretend like I'm in the background, just delving about. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm looking for Here, I'll do a bus just to disappear. Okay. Uh, I'll do pass without trace again. And okay. 
That's going to be a 17 for me. Okay. And the crowd. Strider just goes poof. Okay. We'll see you next time. See you next week, guys. Are we doing Friday or Saturday? Because I thought we were doing Friday. We're trying Friday, but we're trying Saturday. Yeah. We only did Saturday because it's it's easier for me. Gotcha. Okay. No worries. But we but 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 we often shoot for Friday. Yeah, Fridays for sure. Because of I will do what I can. I might have a card tournament on Friday and Saturday next week. I will let you know. Okay. Okay. All right. Bye, guys. Later. Bye. Bye. Yes, I'm Madame Gubo. Um, I'm the psychic entertainment. (laughs) Make a deception check. This evening. Uh, That's going to be a 22. All right. He kind of looks you up and down and says, I wasn't informed of a madam, whatever, but (laughs) if if you, I believe you. And he goes, just head on in. Don't cause any trouble, though, or I'll personally would kick you like ass. me to, Would you like me to tell you what your, uh, read your fortune? You see his eyes kind of light up, and he kind of looks around and says, you could do that real quick? Oh, of course I can. Let me see your palm. He outstretches, and he's got a large hand, and he kind of outstretches it. Mm, I'll begin tracing his, uh, the, like, the little lines on his fingers. Oh, of course, of course. Mm, fascinating. It seems here that, um... Something very exciting will be happening this evening. Um, (laughs) Something unexpected. Something completely and utterly off the rails. I see a lover, either potential or someone you're interested in. Hmm. Of many love lines. Fascinating. He just kind of looks down at his hand and says, you can get that off of my hand? Yes, your hands have a lot of things on it. You don't wash your hands very much. <laughs> he goes, well, yeah, that is that is true. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so you can tell a lot about a person who doesn't wash their hands. And you can, hear, you can hear some of the women in the crowd kind of, you know, quietly laughing to themselves. And he goes, that, that's enough, just, just go inside. <laughs> yes, thank you. Goodbye. And you all three, I'll say Dante stays outside. Yeah, he, he's he like scaling in. the building. I suppose <laughs> fear, fear is the crystal ball. <laughs> oh, I don't have a crystal ball. I do have a set of tarot cards, though. All right, so you head inside. Um, as you the the front garden has got a couple people, you know, mulling about, drinking what looks like wine and eating little snacks off platters. And as you head into the interior of the house. You see, it's quite a lively party. There's a lot of people talking. There's a small band performing some just light music in the background. Um, what would you guys like to do? Hugo, you should probably go try to find that child. I am going to make sure that people think I am who I say that I am. All right. All right. Okay. So, Hugo, make a perception check. To see if you can identify where the child went. All right. I uh, found a child. <laughs> I got a seven. Seven? Yeah. You <laughs> you quietly find a corner of the room and just begin scanning the faces until eventually you see the child handing the pouch of coin over to a man in a wheelchair. The man then produces something out of his pocket, hands it to the child. The child bows and heads out the door. A man in a wheelchair. I didn't get to see like what. Um, I suppose it might. With your low perception, you couldn't see what he was. You couldn't see what he handed the child, but you saw the child hand off the pouch of coin. Hmm. To a man in a wheelchair. What is he dressed like? Um, he's dressed in a fine robe. You know, it looks. You can't really see his legs, so you can't determine if he even has any, but. His uh, the rest of him seems rather healthy. Is the wheelchair like? Uh, is it ostentatious in any way? Or is it just like? It's know, kind of know. well. It's it's not flames <laughs> painted on the side. <laughs> it's a very it's a very strange looking wheelchair. It's not like silver and black. It looks more like uh, gold and black. Oh. And you can hmm. see as he he doesn't actually use his arms to move it. It seems to just move on its own as he walks around, as he slowly peruses the crowd. Hmm. 
I'll walk up to an attendant, be like, hello, yes, I'm Madame Gubo. I was the, uh, uh, I'm the entertainment for this evening. Where should I, where is um, the master of the house? I need to thank him before I begin setting up. Make a deception check. Uh, 26. 26. Um, the, the little, the butler goes, oh, of course, of course. And he, he ushers yeah. you over to the wheelchair gentleman who kind of sees you approach and you see his eyes kind of squint and he raises an eyebrow and he says, uh, who are you? Hi, I guess, um, Arthur Sin, I might? He goes, he kind of does a small bow and he goes, yes, I'm Arthur Sin. Ah, uh, yes, I'm Madame Gubo. I was, um, I'm the entertainment this evening. You hired me specifically for the, um, the little fortune telling and the seance. Make a deception check with disadvantage. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. All right. Um, an unnatural 20. All right. Because he I goes, can't roll below a 10. Yes. He kind of <laughs> he scratches his uh, smooth chin and says, I don't recall hiring a, a seer for this party, but I did make the plans a number of months ago. He goes... As long as you're not here to cause trouble, I suppose it won't be any harm. I'll pull out a notebook. I... This is Arthur Sin, correct? He goes, that is my name. Oh. I... It says... I... Hmm. It, it odd, and I'll put it in. Well, I assure you, you're going to have the most interesting night. <laughs> I'm going to close my eyes and hold my... Uh... Well, I am wearing my mask. I'm going to hold my hands up to my temple kind of hold my hand up into the air and go, I'm sensing that the room in which you would like me to set up is located in this direction. And you just kind of, you quickly point to the left or the mm -hmm. right, whichever you choose. Mm -hmm. And he goes, oh, yes, just set up there and give the guest readings as they uh, approach. And he goes, you're allowed to eat and I will pay you at the end of the night a total of, and he kind of throws his hand up and he goes, how much do you usually charge? Oh, uh, probably about 25 gold pieces an hour. Because that should be no problem. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> like one Rolex per hour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty much. <laughs> Excellent. I'll set up. Um, I will uh, go over to a table and sit down. All right. Um, do I see Dante? Uh, Dante, Dante. Uh, Hugo. Hugo. You do see Hugo kind of standing in a corner off to himself, trying to blend in. Be like, Psst, Hugo. Mm. Oh, I'll uh, telepathically talk to him. Hugo. Uh, yeah, yes. It's over here. Do you see me? I'm right here. Do you see me? Yeah. I'll I'm wave. Trying keep, I'm trying to keep an eye on the man in the wheelchair. Oh, okay, cool. Um, I will be in this room doing fortune telling. All right. What, what What is the plan here? I don't know. Oh. But we're here, aren't we? <laughs> we are. <laughs> Mars is slowly rolling around in bed, frantically. Yeah. Watch this next session. Mars is here. He's at <laughs> the party. <laughs> <laughs> he got invited. Yeah. Because All right, I will sit down. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. I will sit down at the, um, the table and place right. my cards out. All right, you see a couple people kind of approach interested, and one woman kind of sits down and says, Tell me my fortune. Will I ever find true oh. love? What's his name? Oh, my goodness. How shall I find him? And she just continues prattling on. All right, let me see. I will pull out my cards. Oh, my, my. Your true love. Hmm. You will, in fact, find true love. I will reveal another card. Oh, my, my. From an most unusual of places. The person in which you seek will be a um, rather tall individual. I'm seeing a face. He's a hobgoblin. Wow, how ethnic. And his name will be... Dorbo Furferson, a rather regal position in Hobgoblin culture. 
However, he is located on the surface of the, uh, on the, uh, the ground, not here up in the city. She's you will meet him on the ninth of the coldest of winter months. However, the name of the month is kept from me, as you will know it when you feel the weather outside. Fascinating. Hmm. You see her eyes. That's all I see. She's just wide with her mouth partially open, and she kind of like adjusts herself and says, "Well, well, I, uh, I better head to the surface then." You and better. She goes, "Husband, get my cloak," and she. <laughs> Husband, get my cloak. <laughs> you see the sheep. See. You see the sheepish man kind of come over and say, "Yes, dear," and he hands her his coat. I oh. will. Oh, well, one moment. I'll point at the husband and touch my hands at my temple. I see uh, a cucking, cuckold. <laughs> In my, in your future. Hmm. Fascinating. You see, you, see, I will then, just, uh, you see he's beaten down and he just goes, I see it in my future as well. <laughs> Poor man. Um, I will produce a, um, a jar. I don't think I have one, actually. You have the mug? Um, I do have the mug. I will take the mug and I will place it on the counter and I will play. <laughs> and it's my tip. It's my tip mug. She kind of she rifles through her purse and produces two silver and tips it into the current mug. Thank you. Well, no, silver to thank mine. you. And she goes, "Come." And she, oh yes, of course. She grabs her husband. Anyone and else want leave. their fortune told? You see a small crowd of people gathering around your table now. One at a time, please. One at a time. Uh, however, the seance will be having it in about 30 or so minutes. So, as many as watches I can get in before we start the seance. It'll be great. We're going to be contacting the... I don't know. We're going to contact something. It won't be here, I can tell you that. Okay, so for the sake of brevity, the next hour yeah. goes by as you're doing uh, readings, and you make about, I'd say, like thirty silver in tips. Oh fuck yeah! What does the man in the wheelchair do within that hour? You see him just kind of uh, smooths around the party, talking to guests. Eventually, he does find himself over to the the seeing table, and eventually, people kind of part their way as his wheelchair rolls up, and he kind of gently puts his hands on the counter and says. Uh, Read my fortune. Oh, of course. I'd love to. I'll pull my cards out. Hmm. Yes. What exactly would you like to know? Um, without his lips moving, you hear in your head, he says, just oh. tell me my fortune. <laughs> oh, my, my. I can, sir. I will respond in my telepathy. Oh, yes. You see him raise an eyebrow as you do it. this, and a playful yes. smile kind of comes across his face. Psychics of a feather flock together. <laughs> now, Mr. Arthur said, I've never met someone as mentally perplexing as you. <laughs> All right, I will produce the first card. This card is your pass. I produce the artifact card. It is a jar with a skull in it. The artifact card. I see in your past you've donated quite a lot of artifacts to a very recent museum in places. Somewhat of a, um, uh, uh, such a, you know, someone who loves to give to the sciences and the arts the histories um oh i also see in your past the, i produced the second card the warrior hmm marvelous um you lost your legs in a um, rather violent altercation or maybe not so much lost your legs but the ability to walk something scarred you he, you see him kind of oh. lean on his elbow and he just kind of nods and just watches as you play the cards out. And you see the crowd is all kind of falling silent. The music has kind of drifted off. And everyone's just kind of intently watching. The third card of your past. Oh dear, Arthur Sid. I produce the third card. It is the beast. This made a rather 
interesting individual. Something has turned you to something more ravenous. The loss of something quite dear to you has transformed you into such a uh, dark individual. Everyone has a skeleton in their closet. <laughs> now, allow me to tell you about your present. I am pulling cards out of my actual Taroka deck and playing them on, the, on my table, so hold, get a load of this. The third card, this was completely random, mm -hmm. for your present, I produced the thief. Oh my, my, officer, you're up to no good. It seems the beast has led you down a rather odd path. I don't know what you're stealing, physical or metaphysical, but I can tell you right now, you have my heart. <laughs> oh my, my. And the third card, or the second card of your present, I produced the priest. There's a sense of rationality to your uh, current situation. You are trying to improve yourself with these acts in which you are performing. This is your business. Ah, yes. The third card of your presence, the Invoker. A rather odd card, to say the least. But you wish to summon forth something, whether metaphysical or physical. Position, title, status, who knows. But that is what your goals are currently going for. Hmm. And let me tell you of your future, Arthur. Oh, my, my, Arthur. It would seem that the first card in your future is the dungeon. It would seem that whatever these dastardly things you're up to, Arthur, might catch up to you. <laughs> Allow me to read you your second card. <gasps> Arthur, Arthur, Arthur. I produce the horseman who is death riding on a horse. This is no good, Arthur. It would seem that you're... <laughs> Life might be cut short if things were to continue the way that they are. And allow me to produce the third and final card of your future. Oh, the marionette. Most fascinating. It would seem that the strings in which you pull will be cut rather violently, Arthur. The puppet, the charade, will come all crumbling down. A most interesting thing, Arthur. Those cards were com pulled completely from random. <laughs> all right. Uh, as you finish the last card, you see his face has gone from this half-smile of amusement to this stern, kind of deep-thinking look. He just kind of nods song. his head. Alas. Who am I to say? Our destiny is what we make of it. You see him kind of smile and laugh to himself. And he says, very impressive. And he says, now I will return to my party. Do have fun. And he turns and oh, rolls Hugh away. Well. I will contact Hugo telepathically and say, holy fucking shit, <laughs> we gotta go. We gotta, whatever we're doing, we gotta do it quickly. What are we doing? That is the I question. have no idea. Who was All that right. man? That was Arthur. Oh, shit. This is exactly what I feared, you know. Yeah, well, hey. Uh, do we want to call it there for the evening so that next week we can pick it up? We can call it there. It's about to hit the fan. 